let's divorce. I can't take it anymore. My husband and mother-in-law treat me like a housekeeper and don't value me at all. I realize that I don't need to serve such people anymore. Huh? What about housework? Take the three brats with you. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here, you nuisance. This house is ours. <laughs> of course, I have no intention of handing over my precious children to such people. Now, this is the beginning of a truly enjoyable life. Let's make these two people who can't share anything taste health to the fullest. My name is Camilla, I'm 45 years old. Currently, I live with my husband Dylan, three children, and my mother-in-law, making it six people in total. My eldest child is Ellie, a beloved daughter who will enter elementary school this year. The younger ones are three-year-old twin boys who are in their mischievous phase. Anyway, every day is so busy that my eyes spin and my average sleep time is about three to four hours. I often feel discouraged about how long this life will continue, but watching my children grow is my raison, so I can somehow manage to keep going for now. We started living with my mother-in-law three years ago. When I found out that my second child was twins and that it would be quite busy, I decided that I had to work hard. As soon as my husband came home from work, he said, I have a great idea. Since child rearing will be busier from now on, let's have my mother move in with us, and we'll live with six people in this house. Before I could say, wait a minute. It's too sudden. My husband started talking one after another, saying that he had already talked to his mother about living together, that he had received her okay, that his mother was living alone, so it would be less lonely for all of them to live together, that she would help with meal preparation, and so on. When I listened carefully, it felt more like it was all for my mother-in-law than for me. Since my father-in-law passed away four years ago, my husband has been visiting his parents' home almost every day. Even before we got married, I thought my husband loved his mother very much, but I became convinced of it after my father-in-law passed away. I was shocked by the distance and tone of his voice when I saw my husband comforting my grieving mother-in-law. Oh no. This is definitely a case of a mommy's boy. I have to be careful not to push too hard, or he'll get angry, I remember thinking that in my mind. Anyway, my husband loves my mother-in-law very much. When he comes home from work and opens his mouth, he talks only about my mother-in-law. He talks about how they had lunch together at the neighborhood association meeting today, or how they stayed in an air-conditioned room because it was hot today. My daughter in front of him has many friends and has learned a lot at nursery school, but he doesn't show any interest in such stories. Hey, Dylan, I understand your mother's story. But listen to Ellie's story a little bit. She said she wanted to talk to daddy because she practiced for the sports festival today. I wanted him to communicate with my children, so I told him after listening to all of my husband's stories, but it didn't seem to go well. You're trying to cover up the fact that you hate my mother. You should be talking about my mother who is living alone and working hard, not Ellie's story. I got desperate like this, and our relationship as a couple got even worse after that day. And so, regardless of my opinion, we started living together, and that's where we are now. As for my mother-in-law, she doesn't help with housework even though she lives with us. She pushes everything onto me and lives freely every day. Originally, it was an excuse to get help because it would be difficult with twins, but when I gave birth, I went to my parents' house far away. My mother was very worried about me, who was exhausted from the trip, and often asked, Are you getting along with Dylan? Are you okay? That's because even after the twins were born, they never came to see me once. When I thought a phone call had come, Dylan would say, When are you coming back? It's hard for my mother to do all the housework alone. You've rested enough, haven't you? Come back soon. He said such things without hesitation, asking me to take care of everything around the house so that he could come back quickly. Even after the postpartum checkup was over and we returned home, my husband and mother-in-law did not help with housework or child rearing. No matter how much I was struggling in the middle of the night, the two of them didn't care at all. Whenever they opened their mouths, they would say things like, I'm hungry, so make me some food, or, the room is dirty, so vacuuming properly. And what were they doing? They were always together like lovers, talking happily together almost glued together except for going to the bathroom. 
there was no room for me to get between my husband and mother-in-law, and of course, my daughter and twin sons didn't like my mother-in-law at all. Seeing her unloved grandchildren, my mother-in-law would say such terrible things as, these kids aren't cute at all. Especially that girl. If you're a girl, you should act like one. I thought that was too much. That's a terrible way to talk. Ellie will be shocked. Please think about Ellie's feelings a little bit. The twins may not understand what they're being told yet, but my daughter, who we start elementary school, can understand that she's not being paid attention to and that she's disliked. In fact, she says things like, why do daddy and grandma hate Ellie? All my friends say they love daddy, but Ellie hates daddy. We became a family, but my husband only looked at my mother-in-law and didn't value us. Honestly, I wondered if there was any point in living with such a person. It goes without saying that the words divorce came to my mind. Still, I managed to endure this unreasonable situation, but the decisive event happened a week later. We're going out to eat with my mother today, so we don't need dinner. I received such an email from my husband during the day. When I looked at my mother-in-law, she was happily choosing clothes to wear for the meal and was in a good mood. I suddenly said, can you change today's dinner to tomorrow? Today is Ellie's birthday, I thought it would be useless to say so, but I told her anyway. However, I was met with a surprisingly cold stare. What? Why do we have to change our plans? Birthday? It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with us. <laughs> I also sent an email to my husband asking him to change his plans because it was my daughter's birthday, but I was told the same thing as my mother-in-law. That's none of my business. You should just have a birthday party on your own. The time I spend eating out with my mother is more important than Ellie's birthday. I felt that what I had built up so far was crumbling. I see, okay. But can you at least prepare a present? I told him that, but he ignored it. I never received a reply after that. It's Ellie's birthday once a year. She shouldn't have to go through a sad time. I thought so and finished the housework and ran to the store. I bought a birthday present and a cake with lots of strawberries, decorated the room, and prepared a surprise birthday party. My husband and mother-in-law were not present, but I celebrated with my twin brothers and four people in total. We went to pick up the children from the nursery and returned home. All three of them were quite excited and happy. Especially Ellie, who was smiling and said many times, thank you, mom. Ellie is happy. I gave her a pink school bag that she had been wanting for a long time as a present, and Ellie was overjoyed. School bag. I'm happy. I'll cherish it forever. Ellie said. So, the four of us had a birthday party while my husband and mother-in-law were absent. Seeing the happy faces of the children, I realized that I had to protect this smile forever. That's what I swore to myself again. After returning home from dinner, the two of them were quite drunk and in high spirits. I wished they would go to their rooms and sleep quietly without causing any trouble. However, that was impossible. My husband started talking to my daughter. Ellie, you're going to be an elementary school student from spring. Well, there may be a lot of difficult things, but do your best. I won't be able to attend Ellie's entrance ceremony or sports festival, but do your best. <laughs> He was throwing such heartless words at her. I thought, is he sane? There was no need to say such a thing. Moreover, today was Ellie's birthday. Hey, you're too drunk. Don't say such rude things in front of Ellie. You should go to bed. You have to wake up early tomorrow, right? When I said that, my husband suddenly got very angry. You're so annoying. You're just a housekeeper who can't even do housework properly. Don't interfere unnecessarily. Even my mother-in-law, who was listening to the conversation, came up to me and said. I'm irritated by your bossy attitude. It's thanks to Dylan that we can live such a wealthy life. Don't you have any gratitude? I thought about their words. It's impossible. I can't do it anymore. Before I knew it, I had asked for a divorce. I've had enough. Let's get a divorce. I'm tired of living together. 
My husband and mother-in-law treated me like a housekeeper and never valued me. I don't need to serve such people anymore. Let's get out of here. I don't want to see these people's faces anymore. However, my husband and mother-in-law had a different story. Huh? What about housework? If you're leaving the house, take the three brats with you. Don't push any more trouble on me. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here, you nuisance. This house is ours. <laughs> well, I'm really happy that you finally decided to leave this house. My mother-in-law seemed to be particularly happy that I had brought up the idea of divorce. Take the brats with you, my husband said, but of course I had no intention of handing over my precious children to such people. Now, this is the beginning of a truly enjoyable life. Let's make these two people who can't share anything experience hell to the fullest. I decided to take revenge on these two people. Of course, I'll take the kids and leave. If I leave them with you, they'll just be unhappy. So I'll pack up and leave tomorrow morning, so don't worry. When I told him that, my husband looked relieved. Did he think I was going to leave the kids and leave the house? That's impossible. <laughs> wow, that's great. The annoying brats are leaving with you. That means I'll be living with mom from tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs> Ignoring my happy husband, I went to my daughter. Ignoring the twins who were already asleep, I told my daughter that we were leaving tomorrow. Let's go to grandpa's house tomorrow. We're moving. Really? I'm so happy. I'll get ready right away. My daughter was more excited than I expected. She probably wanted to leave this house as soon as possible. We packed our bags and asked the moving company to move the next morning. When we left the house, my husband and mother-in-law were still sleeping in the room and they didn't even seem to notice that we had left. Well, that's easier on the mind. After a few hours, we returned to my parents' house, and my daughter and sons were hugging their grandfather with joy. My mother said, you made a good decision. You're amazing. You have to work hard for your children from now on. I requested a divorce procedure from a lawyer, but before I could make such a request, I received a call from my husband and mother-in-law. When I looked at my smartphone, there were more than 50 missed calls. And it's still going on now. You just realized it now. When I answered the phone with that kind of feeling, my husband first trembled and said in a trembling voice. Hey, what's going on? This letter, selling the house and paying $1,000 a month in child support, that's definitely wrong, he said that. I don't know what he's talking about. Huh? Of course. That house was originally in my name. Why do I have to pay the property tax for a house we were kicked out of? And it's only natural to pay child support. You're a father, aren't you? Don't play dumb. It seems that my husband and mother-in-law had forgotten that the house we had been living in was in my name. Actually, after quitting my job, I had been earning a living as an investor, little by little. Because my husband is a low-income earner who can only get $1,300 a month. There's no way we can support three children and a money-consuming mother-in-law. And yet, because he said things like, become a housewife, or, you should do it, which were reckless, I spent time and money on investments under the condition that I would do housework perfectly and earn money at other times. It was a half-hearted investment to begin with, but it seemed to suit me, and I was able to increase my money quickly. I was even able to pay off the loan on the house I bought when I was single in the last few years. Then it's a division of property. Leave half of the money you earn to me. That's fair, isn't it? You can't just take money from me and not give me anything in return. That's not allowed, is it? My husband, who was quite upset, had completely lost his mind. And even my mother-in-law agreed with those words? That's right. I know you have a grudge against us, but when it comes to dividing property, it's a different story. If that's the case, I have to make them understand. Let me tell you something. I have received no penny of living expenses and the loan or utility bills since I married Dylan. I haven't received any wedding or childbirth gifts from you. Oh, that. That's right. 
Actually, I have never received any congratulations from my mother-in-law. I paid for all the wedding expenses and the membership fees for my in-laws. My parents are poor and don't have any money. He said that, and I had no choice but to endure it. However, as soon as we started living together, they ate out frequently, planned trips, and I didn't understand it at all. Finally, they kicked me out and made the house theirs. That can't be allowed. My husband, who understood his mistake, had no choice but to apologize. He couldn't think of any way to change the situation other than apologizing and asking me to come back. I'm sorry, Camilla. I was wrong. I'm sorry for causing trouble to you and the children. Let's talk again and live together as a family of six. Okay? Yes, Camilla. I think that's better. Because it's not good for the children. A single parent family is definitely going to be harassed. When I thought about what they were saying, it was a roundabout threat. I couldn't give in to cheap words or incomprehensible threats. No, you're completely wrong if you think I'm going back to that house. No matter how many times you apologize, even if you get a settlement, I won't go back. And don't say that you're having trouble without me, I know you're just after money. It must have hit the nail on the head. I could faintly hear my husband's voice saying, damn it, from the receiver. If a sincere apology and sincerity had been conveyed, I might have felt something, but unfortunately I didn't feel anything. Rather, their arguments were ridiculous, and I thought their future would be hell. Still, my husband said he wanted to reconcile by using the children, but my daughter, who was listening next to me, took the phone and said. Hey, daddy and grandma? Neither mom nor I are going back to that house. Even if we live there, no one will be happy. It's better to live here. She said that to her father. My husband, who was pushed away by his children, couldn't argue anymore. Don't say that, let's reconcile. His crying figure pleading with his six-year-old daughter was really pathetic. Well, that's why you should leave that house as soon as possible. According to the real estate agent, that property is quite popular with child-rearing generations, so it will sell quickly. After that, please take care of the divorce procedure through a lawyer. I said that and hung up the phone. After the persistent husband and mother-in-law hung up the phone, they continued to contact me many times. In the end, they even came to my parents' house and apologized on the doorstep. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me for being inadequate, I'm really reflecting on myself. I can't live without Camilla and the children. Camilla, please come out and listen to us. Please forgive Dylan, for the sake of the children, let's live together as a family again? My mother-in-law, who is still not admitting her fault even in this situation, is saying that it's for the children's sake. I was amazed that she would still have this personality even if she were reborn many times. Of course, I have no intention of dealing with these two anymore. We were finally able to live peacefully after leaving my husband and mother-in-law, and I didn't want to be disturbed or waste any unnecessary energy. However, they were too persistent and their voices were too loud and it was disturbing to the neighborhood, so my parents reported it to the police. The two were taken away by three police officers. Please listen to me, Camilla. He called my name loudly until the very end, and I felt nauseous. Well, that was the last time they appeared in front of our family. After that, the divorce was finalized through a lawyer. It was decided that they would pay $1,000 a month in child support until the three children become adults. Since they are poor, I was worried that the payment would be delayed, so I explained the circumstances of the divorce to the company just in case and arranged for it to be deducted from my salary. Even though he was only receiving $1,300 a month, when $1,000 was deducted, he had only $300 left. <laughs> well, it seems that the company allows side jobs, so I heard that they found a part-time job and worked at a construction site at night. Of course, they were also asked to leave the house. They couldn't find a new home right away, but they ended up moving to a dilapidated apartment that matched their income. Their future looks bleak, but they are a close couple, so they will somehow manage. I will definitely receive child support no matter what happens. As for us, since we moved back to my parents' house, we have been spending incredibly happy days. 
The children laugh a lot every day, eat a lot of food, and are full of energy. I will continue to do my best to protect my children's smiles in the future.